African problem is essentially and fundamentally a failure of leadership and that corruption is a manifestation of that failure of leadership. Mm -hmm. The reason why people engage in corruption is because these individuals have no agenda for their countries. The first reason why they want to get into public office is that they want to use public office to feather their nest. They get into public office so that they have prestige. But if you have men and women who are competent, then they will use their office for the benefit of their countries. They will not engage in activities that undermine their countries. I agree with you, therefore, that if Africa were to focus on the question of leadership, and Chinua Achebe of Nigeria, in my view, understands it very well. He says the problem of Africa is simply and squarely a problem of leadership. Your own Aikwe Yama, right to say leadership. Yes. Do you mean competence? You know, leadership... I, are you speaking to the, the question that there are incompetent people who are handling the African affairs and they've been doing it for a while and we'll come back to the how they are produced through the democratic channel and whether that democratic channel is actually good for Africa in the end in the final analysis but when you say it's a problem of leadership do you mean that a leader is incompetent leaders of Africa are incompetent they are not well prepared they lack the expertise they lack the experience is that what you're saying? That is exactly what I'm saying. That if you look at many African countries, the men and women that we have given the opportunity to lead us are actually misleaders. They don't understand what is expected of them. They don't appreciate what is expected of them. They don't use the expertise that is around them. Because what is leadership? Leadership is the ability to identify professionals and experts in different areas and use the expertise to achieve the overall agenda Agenda that is in the interest of the nation so that you don't have to be an economist to ensure that your country is moving in the right economic direction your ability to identify those who have the technical know-how to use that technical know-how and to ensure that that technical know-how fulfills the desires of your people because people are very basic needs people want food and therefore you've got to ensure that your agriculture is right. People want medicine in the hospital to ensure that you have medicine and properly trained personnel. People want infrastructure to ensure that you have infrastructure. People want their taxes to be utilized well and people must have focus. And we have seen in the recent past, and I remember during my lecture I said, within a very short stint, a young man who had not gone to school very well, Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso, was so clear in his vision as to what ought to happen to his country that he was able to put together a number of individuals to move the country in the right direction. In one sentence, therefore, I'm saying African leaders have demonstrated not once, not twice, not thrice, but times without number that they are incompetent. And even those who have had the advantage of formal education have demonstrated that the education they have does not change their minds and hearts fundamentally. What we have are ethnic alliances of one kind or the other. So in the position, you have one ethnic alliance. In government, we have one ethnic alliance. And this, in my view, is the dangerous thing. So that I've said, and I repeat it here, that in Kenya, like most African countries, what we call elections are actually ethnic censors to determine which eth combination of ethnic groups is larger than the other than they serve in office. We must liberate ourselves from that. Can, going can forward, we, can we? it is not going to be it's, easy. It's cultural. It's, it, is, it's, it, it is cultural and it is in dangerous. Our DNA. It is, uh, that is the tragedy. It appears to be in our behavioral DNA, but in, in our neighborhood in can Tanzania. Can education change that? Education, if it is directed in a positive way, has it been done? It has been done. In the neighborhood in Tanzania, with many more ethnic groups, through the effort of the Nyerere regime, men and women are elected into office on the basis of their ability, because the parties are not anchored in ethnicity. So it can be done. And that is why I don't believe that is embedded in our DNA. It is the bankrupt politician whose interest is short-term agenda who allows ethnicity to be the only way of political mobilization. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is dangerous to a young country such as ours. Mm -hmm. So the African populace, the African illiterate, the default position is that they revert to their default instincts of ethnic association. Mm -hmm. So that is the next battle. 
The next battle is to ensure that we tell Africans that political parties are merely vehicles for articulating your interest in agriculture, in education, in health, in infrastructure, and that then becomes the platform of determining whether a political party ought to be elected into office. Mm. That is easier said than done. Easier said than done because the bankrupt politician will always go back 